telehealth has come to stay in our way of life, securing quality healthcare delivery anywhere in the world. Africa has come to take a front seat in delivering this type of healthcare. Aspramed means diaspora medicine. Who is Aspramed? Our journey so far and what are the future plans? We have 54 countries in Africa and we have 1.34 billion people on that planet, on that continent, which is about 18.2% 18, 18 of the world population. We are expected to grow by 2050 if you add the total population of India to our number now to about 2.5 billion at that time. This is a huge opportunity, it's a huge marketplace for any business. We've heard about what Dr. Shula has said about agro-business in Africa, and this is also one type of business that can, that can be sustainable. Now, I want to point at this Lagos. Lagos is about 15.3 or 4 million people at the moment, and Nigeria itself has a population of over 234 million people. I will talk about that when I get there. But what is very important is that majority of people from the rural region are moving a mass to the urban area. And the sole purpose of that is to do what? To get better healthcare delivery, better life, quality life. How can we come in and help in this perspective? How can we bridge the gap from quality healthcare delivery from the urban centers and give it to the rural region whereby they can access quality healthcare? And this is where Aspramed has come in to see how can we solve this problem. During the pandemic, 2020, we had our first presentation about telehealth generally. The types of model of care that can be delivered in any part of the world. And it's very important to appreciate that telehealth can be adopted and can be adapted to any model of healthcare that you can take off. You just think of it, it can be done. Some group of professionals sat down and said, okay, how can we make this happen? Enough of the talk, as Dr. Shulani has said, we need to do. And we went forward to form a company which has now been registered with ASIC in Australia here in September 2021. And that's just about 10 to 9 months afterwards. Then we move forward to register the company, the sister company in Nigeria, six months, um, probably seven months after that. Who is Aspram? We are a social enterprise, as I've said irrespective of a geographical location, you want to bridge that gap. You want to ensure that you can attain quality health care in any part of the world you are. And that is the cornerstone of our purpose. I want to use the convenience of telecommunication to achieve this. Why do we choose Nigeria as our pilot point? People will say probably because some of the founders are Nigerians. But that is not the whole reason why we use that. As I've said, we have 234 million people at the moment in Nigeria. Based on the data by Nigeria Health Facility Registry, we have operational hospitals in Nigeria now in just a bit less than 40,000 to cater for 234 million people, which means we have 17 health facilities to help 100,000 Nigerians. That is a big ratio. And of recent, it said that we have to one physician, irrespective of your level of specialization, is one to 5,000 Nigerians to cater to. That is a lot of number. And 
as an entrepreneur, you want to see that opportunity and plug into that to make things and solve problems for people. It's very important that we decentralize sort of healthcare delivery and make sure it's easily accessible to people from every part of the world you come from. We've started a company in Nigeria. We have operational accounts in three major foreign currencies pounds, dollars, euro at the moment. We also operate in Naira. And um, currently we have two offices in Nigeria. One in Lagos, which is the uh, commercial hub of the country, and one in the border. So our team in Nigeria, we have um, national head of operations. We have you know, admin uh, employees that are responsible for onboarding doctors, patients, you know, and allied health people. Generally. So we are getting there, we are starting gradually. We want people to be able to access healthcare or healthcare delivery 24 7, any time of the day. And, um, and this also helps to support video conferencing in real time data. And we can also help to support the specialist care delivery system in the country, whereby people will not have to travel several kilometers, several hours to get to see a specialist. If you go to your, if you have Apple phone, you can download the Aspermed app now. If you can do that now, that would be great. So go to Apple, you can download Aspermed app. We have the doctor's app and we have the patient app. And this is at 100% stage of development. Now, this is the next step. Our vision is to try to create a hospital in space, if you can follow my explanation easily. We intend to create another app, which is the pharmacy app. This pharmacy app, what it does is, we are talking to different, you know, legitimate pharmacies in the country, whereby they can have our app. And here, a doctor can see a patient through the app, prescribe your medication, and you can go to the pharmacy and get your medication. And the pharmacist can see your name and your data on their own app. The same thing we want to go to the laboratory. We want to create a laboratory app whereby a lab scientist can upload your blood test form or whatever you did with them once the doctor has ordered it from the same application. And that way, the doctor can assess the results and discuss with you at a later date. Then we go to imaging and radiology. The same process um, applies with that too. In-app functions are also in, in line whereby we can educate patients. We can also talk to doctors, train doctors, do there's some, there are some things I've participated in whereby I present in grand rounds in teaching hospitals in Nigeria. As a doctor from here, I present topics to trainees, to young people that are coming up. And so we are trying to encompass everything in this app. And there are some data that have shown that 60 to 70 percent of patients do not really need a face-to-face -face consultation. And you can imagine if you plug that into that 334, 234 million people. Already we have established our website. It's www.aspermed.com. We are present in all the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube channels, already ongoing. What are the future plan partners? So I've talked about the pharmacy app. We're talking to some pharmacies about on getting, getting our app and using it to help patient deliver care. The same thing with laboratory scientists and image and radiology. Now, the other model of care is with the private hospitals whereby patients can come with follow-up appointments. Will have been seen by the doctor and the patient can be in their houses to get a follow-up appointment with the doctors and thereby saving them that journey 
of travel time, stress, and everything like that to get to the doctor again, just to see a doctor for five to 10 minutes, and you go home. Now, we had discussion with Nigerian Medical and Dental Council, because I knew a lot of diasporans will ask this question down the line, but I'm, I'll answer this question now, and if you need more explanation, I'll explain straight on it. At the moment, we are talking with some of the members of Nigerian Medical and Dental Council, in Africa, there are lots of policy that guides patient privacy and care, even at the level of telehealth. But what we are talking about is a bit different because what we want to do is to try and talk to the Medical and Data Council to get a streamlined registration for diaspora and doctors, whereby they will have telehealth care delivery limitation. And so, when they are seeing patients in Africa, they are already registered with the body via the telehealth means. Of course, when they go physically, they may not be able to practice, but once they are here, they can talk to patients and treat patients accordingly and appropriately, without flouting any regulation or any rules. Now, at the same time, I was opportunity to talk to some of our HMOs, that we call them health maintenance organizations. And these are private like insurance companies that have a pool of patient base in their data. And they are actually excited to have us on board. So I've talked to the national manager of Hygia in Nigeria, one of the major frontline HMOs in the country. And I was talking to some of the <laughs> HMOs that are my personal friend I've been talking to already about that. And they're happy to have us on board. Anyway. So with this, we can hit the ground running and get to deliver quality healthcare delivery in Nigeria. Now, the National Health Insurance Scheme, this is a big one. This was started, the act came up in 1999, Act 35 of the Nigerian Constitution. And, um, the NHIS regulate the HMOs. And the NHIS, as you know, health insurance, they have a pool of patients that are already in their database. And with us integrating with these bodies, it's easy for us to reach as many people and as fast as possible. Now, the first one, is the B2C, the launching, which, we, which is what we, we are doing now. We are onboarding doctors onto the app, confirming their registration, making sure that they are legalized to practice in Nigeria. Then, in that way, patients can talk to, pick their doctors, talk to the doctor one-on-one -on -one via the telehealth. The phase two is Going with the private hospitals, which I've discussed earlier. Now, the first three is a, is a game changer. This has not been done in Nigeria up to now. And this model of care delivery, it's, we solve a lot of stress for a lot of patients accessing specialist care in Nigeria. I myself, I trained as a surgeon back home in Nigeria in those days, and I've seen patients coming from different parts of the small rural areas to come and get healthcare. Some people would travel three hours to come and see a doctor for 30 minutes, and you have to go back to travel three hours again. We can solve this problem, and it's very easy to do. All we need to do is get partnership with the government whereby we can get a big telehealth room or we run like a clinic and the specialist will be in there and we'll have hub centers in smaller localities that are closer to people. And by this, they can go there for their follow-up care. They don't need to travel several kilometers to go to the specialist center to get specialist care. And this will solve a lot of problems for a lot of patients. 